some of the stories we've been following this week. New season, new identity. Hear from the fans what they think about the PWHL Minnesota new name, the Minnesota Frost. Olympic champion Reagan Smith is giving back to the community how she's supporting kids in the Metro and what she has her sights set on next. Plus, no club team, no problem. How a high school volleyball player in our area has secured her spot on a D1 college team without playing club volleyball. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marielle Mose, and here at WCCO, we are celebrating the highlights of female athletes in this new digital segment called Women in Sports. In Minnesota and around the country, we witness new records, new accomplishments, and a renewed popularity in women's sports. We'll share new stories with you every week, right here, as we do our part to give these athletes the recognition they deserve. Now you've heard it and you've seen the video. Feel the freeze. That's the new slogan of the defending champions of the Professional Women's Hockey League. PWHL Minnesota announced its new team name this week, the Minnesota Frost. I headed out to hear from fans about the team's new identity. Being at the games, uh, I was hoping that we could start having some cheers other than like, let's go Minnesota. Morgan Conley is a PWHL season ticket holder and caught as many home games as she could, but felt like one thing was missing during their inaugural season. I was patiently awaiting our team names to start kind of getting that brand identity together. But um, I think it honestly just added to the excitement around the league. Now the wait is over for fans. This team will now be known as the Minnesota Frost. It's kind of a fun uh, take on, you know, just the ice and uh, the lakes and the pond hockey and all that stuff. And it just brings it all together. You know, the excitement of, you know, thinking about a couple months from now, um, you know, seeing fans in Minnesota walking around with Minnesota Frost jerseys on. Frost captain Kendall Coyne Schofield digs the new logo, which the league says is designed to look like icicles in motion to embrace the harsh beauty of Minnesota winters. Such a strong, bold, intense logo um, that I think a lot of people are very excited about, uh, including the players. I appreciate that they didn't go for a feminine name and that they didn't try to like make it cutesy and, and play up the fact that it's a women's league because at the end of the day, it's a sports league. Minnesota Frost will keep the purple and black color scheme, so all of Morgan's gear from before can still be worn for seasons to come. We also heard from PWHL Senior Vice President of Business Operations about the struggles of finding new names, not just for Minnesota, but for the entire league. Um, you know, I, I think this this project was truly a labor of love. You know, I think Everybody here probably under understands sort of context of building out a team name and a logo, uh, where most teams uh, take 18 months to do one logo, one team name, um, and we decided that we were going to do six and nine months. In general, we went through more names than I can count to. Um, I think the challenge in picking a name out is that it has to pass through intellectual property in both Canada and the United States. And so with different laws, rules, regulations in both countries, it certainly presents a bit of a challenge. Well, some Minnesota Frost merchandise is already available online, and I'm told the new jerseys won't be available until the end of October or early November, just in time for the season to start. Now, speaking of PWHL champs, kids got a special opportunity to hit the ice with the Walter Cup and player Lauren Bench. The event was held this week at the Burnsville Ice Center. Bench is a Burnsville High School graduate. She played a crucial role in helping the team acquire the cup this past season. Bench says it's been an amazing experience overall being in this league. It's been incredible and being able to bring the cup back home where I grew up and fell in love with hockey and learned how to skate and everything from age five to now, like it wouldn't have happened without this rink and being able to be here. So it's been incredible to be able to bring it back here. The event wrapped up with an autograph and photo session with fans. Another Minnesota athlete is giving back to the community, eight-time Olympic medalist Reagan Smith. The elite swimmer stopped by Foss Swim School in Burnsville this week to help make sure more kids are learning to swim. She met with kids there and even let a few of them try on her gold medals. Smith helps support a program that funds swimming lessons for kids. She says it's especially meaningful because she learned to swim at the Foss School in her hometown of Lakeville. I have FOSS to thank, I'd say, for my success because I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't get my start at FOSS. I know that when I was this age, I would have loved an experience like this, so it's very cool to be on the other side of things now and, and getting to give back in this way. 
Smith says she has her sights set on 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. But for now, she's excited to spend a few months out of the pool to soak up some time with family and friends. Now get ready for the WNBA playoffs. Tickets for round one of the Minnesota Link playoff games are now on sale. And last we checked, there are still tickets available. You can find those at linksbasketball.com slash playoffs or call the ticket office. Seats start as cheap as 30 bucks. The Lynx first best of three series starts on September 27th second at Target Center. To be honest, throughout the recruiting process, I didn't think I was going to make it this far, you know, without playing club um, and getting the experience that other girls had. Putting in that work beforehand really pays off. That's Jordan Johnson. She's a De La Salle volleyball player who has accomplished something very rare. She secured her spot on a D1 college team without ever playing club. As she and her coach shared with me, that's because she was busy in the offseason dedicating her time to her other passion, science. Powerful hits and big blocks. Just some of what Jordan Johnson brings to the De La Salle volleyball team. The six foot one senior captain owns her role as a middle blocker. Having height as an advantage um, at the net, <laughs> it makes it easier to hit over other blockers um, and, and block myself. But playing the game this well isn't her only strength and passion. So I really love, um, I mean, completely just the whole STEM universe. In her free time, Jordan is on a robotics team called BOB. BOB stands for Black, Outstanding and Beautiful. We are the first all black, um, all women's team. Leading up to her last year of high school, Jordan interned for the twins in their app and development program, coding some of what you see on the team's website. It can be difficult at times to manage all of these things, but if it's really what you love and you put your mind to it. If you work for it, you're going to get to where you want to be. Where she wanted to be was the University of California, Santa Barbara, majoring in mechanical engineering. I hope to join the Air Force or the Space Force um, and become an engineer there, not a pilot. Um, not, not a big fan of heights, um, <laughs> but that would be the dream. While she's making that dream come true academically, she'll also be playing for the UCSB volleyball team. She emailed all of those coaches. Um, coaches started reaching out to me, asking if it was really true that she's this good and she doesn't play year round. De La Salle head volleyball coach Chelsea Hoops says it's almost unheard of to get recruited for college without playing for a club team. She got noticed by putting herself out there. She is not shy. Um, she will ask for what she wants and I think what everyone notices the most is how kind she really is and, and what she brings to our program. It's easy to see what Jordan does for her teammates outside of earning points. If you have that leader who's strong, who's encouraging, I mean, you're going to be able to persevere through different di difficult situations. Since Jordan joined the De La Salle Islanders, this volleyball team made state appearances for the first time in program history the last two seasons. They hope to do it again this year and take home their first medal. And if we really believe in ourselves and in each other and we trust each other, we're going to be able to have success. Sobriety is a tough journey, but it doesn't have to be one you face alone. A group of local climbers is using rock climbing to build bonds with others dealing with addiction. One of the women who is part of the club says it's all about inclusion, and you don't have to be good at climbing to take part. I think I went climbing for the first time like six or seven years ago with somebody. I absolutely hated it. I was like, this is not for me. I don't like this. Um, and then when I came here, I kind of went in kind of like, a little fearful, going to be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like really enjoy this kind of thing. And as I came with everybody else, you know, they're super encouraging. Like there's some people who are like extremely skilled, have all these skills to go on these um, different colors than me. But like everybody is just so motivating and being like, oh, my God, so grateful you got it. The group meets the first Saturday of every month at the Minneapolis Bouldering Project. Thanks for watching this week's Women in Sports. We'll be back with more great stories next week. I'm Marielle Mose.